Hi, this is Steve with Homestrung Jewelry, and today I'm going to show you how to turn this gemstone into this pendant using just wire and a few tools. Now the gemstone we're going to be using today is uh, approximately 40 by 30 millimeter uh, stone. This is uh, a plum blossom jasper. It's drilled from top to bottom. Uh, like I said, it's roughly 40 millimeters by 30 millimeters, relatively thick. And along with this stone, you're going to need 30 inches of 20 gauge wire. I'm using nickel silver today and it's, I've cut it into three 10 inch lengths. You're also going to need a six inch length of 20 gauge half round wire. And then we're also going to, we have a few little tiny beads here which we're going to use to decorate the bead, but you know, that's up to you as to what you want to do. Tools you're going to need. Obviously you're going to need some flush cutters, some sort of a cutter, and then you're going to need round nose pliers, and then you're going to need a chain nose plier and possibly a flat nose plier. I uh, usually you just need one or the other, but I like to have both around just to use it. We're going to need something to make a mandrel, <clears throat> and you can use just an 8 millimeter mandrel, but I'm going to be using this round pencil today. You're also going to need some sort of a ruler, nothing fancy, just something that you can use to measure and cut your wire down at the end. Let's talk for just a minute about the stone that you're going to use. Now this particular stone is a twisted oval, it's kind of a fun stone to use, but there's no reason you can't use some other shape. This uh, Tutorial in this design that we're going to do today could just as easily be, you know, put onto a teardrop, a round, a rectangular or square stone, uh, a marquee. Uh, it would probably work just as well with a heart as well. Uh, one other thing that we ought to mention is the hole that goes down through the center of the bead. The hole in this particular for this particular tutorial needs to be big enough that we can fit three 20 gauge wires through. So this is something that you'll want to check. And just because the hole looks big enough at one end doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be able to fit the wires through. Uh, quite often, in fact rarely do the people who, you know, the lapidaris or the the artisans that make these stones, they don't drill it from one end to the other. What they'll do is they'll run the drill halfway through and then they'll flip the stone over and then they'll drill again from the other side. And quite often the two ends don't meet exactly. And so this particular one, if you look in there, it has a nice clean hole that looks pretty good all the way through, but sometimes you may not be able to see any light at all. And that doesn't mean it doesn't connect and you can't get the wires through there. There just may be a little bend. And so just work the wires in one at a time. Quite often you can't fit all three of them in at the same time. But go ahead and work it, work it in there and make sure ahead of time that this is going to work for you. Now this particular stone here has kind of a, a ragged hole on this side. So I'm going to be using this other side of the stone as the front of the stone. And so let's get started. To begin with, if you haven't already done so, take your wire and cut it into three 10 inch lengths. Also, if you're using a natural wire like copper, brass, silver, or in this particular case, German silver or nickel silver, uh, it doesn't hurt to take some steel wool and clean it up. Now we're going to take the first wire and at the end of the wire, we're going to take our round nose pliers and we're going to make a little loop. Just holding it with the tip of our pliers. We're going to make a little bit of a loop and then we're going to turn this into a closed spiral. Now you can see that the very end of the wire has just a little piece of wire that's straight that's not curved and you don't have to do this. But what I'll do is take my flush cutters and go in and tr trim off that end piece so that we don't have any flat. 
and then I'm going to take my round nose pliers again just the very tip of the pliers and finish that loop and maybe even start the the coiling process then I'm going to take chain nose pliers or round nose pliers and then I'm just going to begin making this closed spiral now I like to hold it down not on the tip of the pliers but down a little ways so I have a little more leverage so I don't have to squeeze quite as hard and then just making little tiny bends I just release and begin wrapping the wire around that central core and what we're looking for on this first wire is a, is a spiral, a coil, that's roughly 7 to 8 millimeters across in diameter. And from past experience, this usually means that I'm going to have three full, three, three and a half full wraps. So I'm about... We've got two full wraps coming up on the three. Let's bring the bring our ruler out. And you can see we're just shy of seven millimeters. So just go a little bit farther. Now using German silver, there's a lot of spring back, and so just be aware of that. If this was copper, we'd, we'd be done already. All right, there's the first one. We're going to do the same thing with the second wire. Grab the wire with the tip of the pliers, and make a little, a little loop. And this one, we don't have much of a flat edge. And so I'm not even going to trim this one. I'm just going to go ahead and make our spiral. Keep those wires together, each coil. And just make little tiny bends, one right after the other. And this one's going to be the same size as the first one. Again, roughly 7 to 8 millimeters in diameter. most important thing is just keeping the coil tight. There we go. Eight millimeters. Now we're going to do one more. And again, we've got a good round loop there. I don't need to trim the end. Now this one we are going to make, the last two we were 7 to 8 millimeters. This one's going to be 9 to 10. So this one's going to be slightly larger. And you don't have to do this exactly the same way I do. I think some people like to go the other direction where they bend it down this way. They feel like they have more control, but this is just the way I'm used to doing it. So 
So this one being a little larger, we want to go at least a little over four total circles. There we are at four. And we're at just a little over nine. Go a little bit farther. Okay. So we've got three closed spirals. What we're going to do now is take our chain nose pliers, or I guess you do this with the flat nose, and we're going to break the neck on each one of these. So we grab it right there by where the spiral ends. And we bring it around so we have this kind of uh, this lollipop look. And do the same thing with the other two. Now, I'm going to take my largest metal bead, which is a four millimeter bead, and I'm going to thread it onto the wire of the largest loop, or the largest spiral, excuse me. So you can see we've got that bead sitting on the top. The other two, nothing. Now we're gonna take our bead figure out what's the front and what's the top, what's the bottom. I'm going to, I want this pretty, you know, plum blossom design down on the bottom on this one. And so we're going to run the, the wires up through the hole. I'm going to do the two small spiral wires first. And then we're going to, and I've got these so that the spirals go in two different directions. And then we're going to put the third one in. And we're going to bring it up right here in the middle. Okay, so we're going to pull that, that middle one up so the bead, and let's pull it back a little bit. Let's get these others up closer. And I'm pulling the two side spirals up so that there's about, oh, a little less than a quarter of an inch on each side, and we're going to bend those out. so that we can fit this bead in, be in between the two. And there we've got the base. I've got the two coils slightly behind the center coil, the center spiral, but let's go back up to the top and bring our three wires together, pull them tight, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend them back at a slight angle, keeping the three wires together as much as I can. So what we've got there is a, oh, what about a 30 degree angle? And then I'm going to take my mandrel, which in this case is my pencil, pull it back just a little ways, maybe just slightly less than a half of an inch, and then I'm going to bend these three wires forward over the front 
of the bead. I'm going to push it in a little bit so you can see what we've got there. We've got our loop and we've pulled this forward. And I'm pinching it in just a little bit. And you can take your pliers and bring it in even a little more. They don't necessarily have to touch, but let's get them in close. And I'm going to leave the pencil in there or your mandrel, whatever, just for a second in order to keep, you know, keep the shape on that mandrel right there. Okay, now we're going to take our fourth wire, which is our half round wire. And there's a flat side, which you can see the light reflecting off of it. And there's the round side. And you can see there's quite a difference. We're going to take our chain nose pliers and we're going to grab that about three quarters of an inch, an inch from the end. And we're going to make, make a little 90 degree bend. Okay, and I'm going to pull out the pencil just for a second. And I'm going to take that short end of the wire and put it right between inside of this loop. And I'm going to take it and bend that short end of the wire down out of the way. And I'm going to take the wire and begin wrapping it around the front and then around to the back. And we're just going to wrap this wire around this loop of wire at the top that focus for you. And we'll do about, let's do five wraps. And come up on the side. So we started inside the loop and then began began wrapping from the back to the front and we've got five wraps excuse me that was only four come back to the back there we go and focus okay we're going to take this end of the wire run it through the through the loop Put our pencil back in there so we know the loop is just fine. And then we're going to trim the ends. And we're going to trim these inside of the loop. your pliers just to mash that all down and so there we've got our bell finished now we've got three wires coming across the front of the bead and we're going to trim these back now there's various things that you can do uh, for this particular one we're just going to make three more spirals and put them up here in the front and so to make these spirals, we're going to take the two outside wires and we're going to trim those to two inches, which is roughly 50 millimeters. And 
and the center wire, we're going to make it two and a half inches long. Again, we're going to make a slightly bigger spiral for that for that middle one. So there's our three front wires. And we're going to just kind of make these closed spirals, outside loops. And so we again bring in our round nose pliers. And we'll start with this one on the right. And we can pull the wire up a little bit. It's wire, we can move it around. And grabbing it with the very tip of the pliers on the very end. And we'll start our spiral. And then use your chain nose or flat nose pliers and just begin to coil this. And I am coiling this so that the, the wire is on the inside of the pendant. The coil is facing the outside. And just little steps, release and grip, bend. As we're getting in close to the end, just keep it up. Just bend it in close to the to the stone. And there's the first one. And just kind of keep it in tight. Now we're going to do the one over on the other side. And we're going to do this one in the opposite direction. So I'm going to flip the stone around, bring the wire out just a little bit. And again, take the tip of the pliers on the end of the wire and make, make a little loop. Get that in focus for you. I'm even going to start the spiral a little bit. Then we'll bring in our pliers. And then just begin the coil, the spiral. I'm moving up to the front of the stone now. holding it that, that other way I mentioned earlier. There we go. 
Looks like a face. Now this last wire, before we begin the spiral process, we're going to put some beads on this. And I've got some two millimeters and three millimeter beads. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate. I'm going to put a two millimeter bead on here first. And the holes on these are really, really small. And they just barely fit on this wire. I know there's a hole in there somewhere. And some of these may actually need to be reamed a tiny bit if they won't fit on the end of the... Whoop, there it goes. Okay, there's the t there's a two millimeter bead. And then we've got a three, which has a slightly bigger hole, so it should go on much easier. And then I'm going to do another two, then a three, then a two. Wow, that went on easier than I expected. I think the hardest part for me is just finding the holes. And one more of the two millimeters. And it slipped right on. I'm lucky today, people. And I'm going to push those up to the end. And then I'm going to go to the end of the wire. Get those beads out of the way. And go back to the, the round nose pliers. And start the, start the spiral. Okay, grab the flat nose or the chain nose if you prefer. And get that, get that closed spiral going. Pull the wire up out of the way. Now we got an extra half inch of wire, so obviously this spiral is going to be at least the same size as the others, maybe a little bigger. Plus we have these beads on the end, which we'll incorporate in the end of the spiral. Okay, I've come up to the beads now. And I don't want to mess up my, my bell, so I'm going to stick the mandrel back in there. And I'm going to see if I can do this with my fingers first off, where I just push this over to the side a little bit, and then just continue the spiral up with the beads on the outside. Bend it over so it's kind of centralized. And 
and just push it down, work it with your fingers till you get it the way that you want. Which I think that looks pretty good right there. Okay, now all this moving around, I've probably screwed up the part at the bottom, so we'll straighten that up a little bit, bring the bell around. And the final thing is, is we grab the two outside wires. I just put a fingernail in each and we just rabbit ear them, bunny ear them. So we separate those out a little bit. And there we have, I'll bend that just a little more. And if you need to use your pliers to do any of the bending or the work with it, that's fine. Anyway, there is the finished pendant. Now, if you enjoyed this video, we would appreciate it if you hit the like button. And if you'd like to be notified of future videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And after you do that, go ahead and click on the bell. And that way you'll be notified of any future videos which we have. Now, I actually have a printed pattern uh, for this particular tutorial. And what's fun is we have examples of other things that you can do with this type of a bead. Uh, just using the three the three wires that go through the middle and so we'll put this on our website keep the price down really low uh, so that if anyone wants a printed copy of this it's available to them but in the meantime we appreciate you being here look forward to seeing you in the future thanks for coming bye bye <laughs>